Hello and welcome to Book Nook. I'm delighted today because our guest on Book Nook wears many hats and has worn many hats, but all of them have uh, coalesced on reading. And so um, welcome with me, if you will, um, Mickey Blackwell, uh, Dr. Mickey Blackwell, who has um, been a, a middle school principal. He has been a superintendent of schools. He's currently a um, professor at West Virginia State University and serves on a library board. Um, as I said, Mickey, you wear many hats, but all of them connect with reading. Uh, you have been a huge advocate for building school libraries, um, for making public libraries a real community living room. And uh, you're here today to share with us a great new idea that you have about an event occurring on April 13th. So welcome to Book Nook. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we usually like to, end, to ask our uh, visitors a little bit about their own reading history. Mm -hmm. um, I know you and have known you for a number of years, so I know you're an avid reader, but could you share with us some of your favorite books from your childhood? Sure. Um, something I'd like to say is when I grew up, I grew up in Elkview, West Virginia, um, between Elkview and Clendenin. And when I grew up at an early age, there weren't a lot of places to buy books. Um, we had a drugstore and a supermarket uh, in our community, and that was about it. And so um, one of the things that I've learned is that if you're going to read, you have to find books that you want to read. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the importance of the library has come in for me. Now, when I was younger, every other week, the bookmobile would come from the Kanawha County Public Library. and. Um, we would always grab a stack. You know, there would be four or five regular folks who would go there. But sometimes that's the only access that we had. You ask about favorite books, and, and while there are books, there are other types of material that I like to read as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I used to read Mad Magazine, Rock and Roll Magazines, uh, comic books. Uh, in the olden days, uh, mm -hmm. Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, The Avengers, X-Men. Uh, there was a lot of vo in challenging vocabulary, which you wouldn't expect. You go back and you read those old volumes again, and there's material in there that they'll have a word, and then they'll have a definition down below, just as was in my textbooks. So um, favorite books, I liked uh, the things that you read, out things about the outdoors, mysteries, adventure stories. Uh, that's what I started reading early on. Mm -hmm. And often those books would either be at school or they'd be at the library. So you counted on this. No wonder you became such an advocate for libraries. It's interesting that you bring up comic books and magazines because um, very often in the research that, that I've read, um, lifelong readers got hooked on reading mm -hmm. because of a magazine or because of a comic book and, um, or because of a serial uh, group of books. For example, in the olden days uh, uh, that I can remember, Bobsy Twins or the Hardy Boys, right. now the Harry Potter series any a little house on the prairie series something that you can follow along but comic books are often that gateway to reading and as you say they build vocabulary well exactly and there's a great deal of critical thinking uh, and i got my start in education as an english teacher and we always try and do predict what happens next or what can you justify from what this character is doing in comparison with another and these types of things are um, perfect when you're reading serialized stories mm -hmm. and basically that's that's what these types of material is and when I talk about reading Rolling Stone or Cream magazine or some of the older rock magazines they always had a lot of record reviews and concert reviews and there's a great deal of critical thinking that's involved in that as well uh, my father used to get Sports Illustrated we used to have National Geographic Sports Afield so there was a great deal of material that we could get delivered to us via the mail that we might not be able to pick up at home because there weren't a lot of bookstores or places where that type of material was available. Well, that touches on one of the, the four cornerstone programs that Read Aloud offers, and that is while we call it book distribution, we distribute a lot of magazines. Yes. And we encourage families to consider as birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, whatever, uh, a subscription to a magazine. It comes every week or every month into the mailbox and, and it emphasizes that ownership. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I mentioned at the, at the introduction that you have some exciting news. You've, you have proposed and the State Board of Education has accepted um, the um, proposal 
and you have an exciting event planned this on this coming Friday on April 13th. Could yes, you tell us about um, it? it's called Let's Read West Virginia, and basically what it is is we're encouraging everyone, folks in schools, but away from just students as well, people in their business place, their senior centers, their community centers. We'd like for everybody to take uh, 15, 30 minutes and read and talk about what you're reading with your friends and your peers, your fellow classmates. Um, with the work stoppage that we all went through in West Virginia a month ago, we missed out on Read Aloud Day. And so um, at the Canal County Library board meeting, we were discussing activities that we could do to um, incentivize reading and what we had missed out on. So we came up with the idea, I came up with the idea at that time for Let's Read West Virginia. And what it is is to take a moment out of your busy day, put away your cell phone, put away your screen, open up a book, a magazine, a newspaper, 15, 20, 30 minutes, and read if you can. Share with your friends too, because what we find is the more you talk about reading, the more likely you are to become interested in other types of materials. We also want to do this with our schools. Um, as director of the Elementary Middle School Association, uh, we're the largest association of principals and administrators in the state, and we have encouraged everyone to take this opportunity, have a reading activity, have a discussion about your reading activity, and just reach out and share the joy of reading, the joy of learning, and the adventures that you encounter every time you open up a book, a magazine, something like that. We often say that we're hoping, we have a little tagline with Read Aloud West Virginia that says, what are you reading? And we're hoping that every West Virginian is asking uh, every other West Virginian, what are you reading? Because you're absolutely right. The more you hear about good books and, 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 uh, and magazines that you're interested in, the more you want to uh, visit those books and magazines yourself. Uh, I'm really excited that this is getting started, and you're hoping that this will become an annual event? Yes, and this is part of National Library Week as well, and we want to emphasize that. Uh, you know, Library Week is, is something, everyone just assumes that you have a library, but we don't realize how much time and finances and resources go into supporting a library. So uh, if you can get to your library, thank your librarian, get a book, bring it home, share it with those uh, that you... Uh, live with and love and the things that you would like to discuss. You know, n nothing will stir something up like saying, boy, I had a really good experience. And someone says, what is it? And you start talking about chapter one in a book or an article that you've read. And everywhere I go, that's what you find. And when I was teaching seventh grade English, we always bring it up, say, what are you reading? And tell me, tell me why you're reading this. And you can just see the joy that will pop up in folks when they start describing what it is they're reading. And then they'll share that, and other folks will say, I'd like to do that as well. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're hoping to encourage, just a joy of reading, a joy of sharing, and an activity where we're all out. We, we talk about the news of the day. We talk about the events of the day. So let's talk about what we're reading during that day as well. And as you say, we're hoping that they're reading every day, but this helps draw attention to it. I was glad that you said put away your cell phones, put away. We all read on screens, certainly. But the, currently, the brain research shows that when we read on a screen, we are more easily distracted, we don't read as deeply, and we don't retain that information for as long. Um, th I think it's particularly critical in families with young children uh, if they see you reading on a screen all the time, they don't know if you're reading on a screen or playing a video game or ordering clothing from a, <laughs> a vendor. So uh, we really do think that print reading material is absolutely essential. And many people think that every school has a library. Sadly, you and I both know that's not the case. There are schools in West Virginia that are operating without um, school libraries. and. Um, while we hope that can be remedied, that's currently the fact. Uh, a lot of schools have classroom libraries. Um, they, they're not as, they don't have the breadth and the depth uh, of books, uh, but a lot of classrooms have libraries. Um, if your listeners are out there, something that they can do, if they've got any books at, at their home that they've used or they, they're not going to read again, donate them to the school. Donate them to your senior center donate them to the, the community center. The more books that are out there and the more choices people have, the more they're going to read. 
And a well-read citizen is a thinking and active citizen. And at this point, we can all benefit from that. Well, that's a good segue into the first book I know you're going to read today because a well, being a well-read citizen gives you power. Being a well-read citizen give, gives you choices. And certainly the book that you're about to read, more than anything else, uh, by Marie Bradby about Booker T. Washington learning to read and being taught to read even w at a time that it was really forbidden to teach slaves how to read um, is certainly evidence of that. He understood that reading was power and reading would enable him to um, reach beyond his servitude. Yeah, I think power is a very good word that you chose. Uh, empowering, you know, people to be able to make their own choices and think for themselves is something that we should all reach to do. And what's the first skill you learn in school? You know, the first comprehensive skill is to learn to read, and then it progresses from there. You learn to read, you learn to decode, you learn to understand, you learn to predict, you learn to apply the uh, things that you read to your own life, and it empowers you to be able to access information. And that's such a critical skill. It carries across all subject areas. And it carries across all careers as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there are very few careers where they say uh, reading is not important to us. And that's what we hope to, to get across uh, through this exercise, our Let's Read West Virginia, not only one day, but every day. Find something new, find something informative, read it, understand it, explain it, share it, apply it, on the next day start all over again. Well, we're very fortunate. Your theme this year is um, uh, West Virginia authors, and yes. we have a wonderful selection of West Virginia authors from which to choose. And um, actually, Read Aloud has created a map of um, some of the authors from West Virginia or books that were written about West Virginia. As I said earlier, you're going to be reading the first one, which is based upon the experiences of Booker T. Washington in Malden, West Virginia. So without further ado, I think I'll get out of here and let you read the book. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Hello. Our first book today is More Than Anything Else, written by Marie Bradby, with illustrations by Chris Seinpoint. This is a book about a great West Virginian and a great American. Before light, while the stars still twinkle, Papa, my brother John, and I leave our cabin to take the main road out of town, headed to work. The road hugs the ridge between the Canal River and the mountain. We travel it by lantern. My stomach rumbles, for we have no morning meal. But it isn't really a meal I want, though I would not turn one down. More than anything else, I want to learn to read. But for now I must work. From sunup to sundown, we pack salt in barrels at the salt works. A white mountain of salt rises above Papa's head. All day long we shovel it, but it refuses to grow smaller. We stop only to grab a bite sweet potatoes and corn cakes that Papa has brought along in his coat pocket. As I eat every crumb of my meal, I stare at the white mountain. Salt is heavy and rough. The shiny white crystals leave cuts on your hands, your arms, your legs, and the soles of your feet. My arms ache from lifting the shovel, but I do not think about the pain there. I think about the hunger still in my head, reading. I have seen some people Young and old do it. I'm nine years old, and I know if I had a chance, I could do it too. I think there is a secret in those books. In the chill of the evening, I follow Papa and John back up the road, stopping to catch a frog. The frog wiggles and slips, but I hold on tight and let go when I want to. There is something different about this place where we live now. All people are free to go where they want and to do what they can. Book learning swims freely around in my head, and I hold it as long as I want. Back in town, coal miners, rivermen, loggers, and coopers gather on the corner. They are worn out as me, but full of tales. 
I see a man reading a newspaper aloud, and all doubt falls away. I have found hope, and it is brown as me. I see myself the man, and I watch his eyes move across the paper. It is as if I know what the black marks mean, as if I am reading, as if everyone is listening to me, and I hold that thought in my hands. I will work until I'm the best reader in the county. Children will crowd around me, and I will teach them to read. But Papa taps me on the shoulder. Come on, and John tugs at my shirt. They don't see what I see. They don't see what I can be. We hurry home. Mama, I have to learn to read, I say. She holds my hand and feels my hunger, racing as fast as my heart. It is a small book, a blue, the color of midnight. She gives it to me one evening in the corner of our cabin, pulling it from under the clothes that she washes and irons to make a little money. She doesn't say where she got it. She can't read it herself, but she knows this is something called the alphabet. She thinks it is a singy kind of thing, a song on paper. After work, even though my shoulders still ache and my legs are stained with salt, I study my book. I stare at the marks and try and imagine their song. I draw the marks on the dirt floor and try to figure out what sounds they make, what story their picture tells. But sometimes I feel I'm trying to jump without legs and my thoughts get slippery and I can't keep up with what I want to be and how good I will feel when I learn this magic and how people will look up to me. I can't catch the tune of what I see I get a salt shoveling pain, and I feel my dreams are slipping away. I have got to find him, that newspaper man. I look everywhere. Finally, I found that brown face of hope. He tells me the song, the sounds the marks make. I jump up and down singing it. I shout and laugh like when I was baptized in the creek. I have jumped into another world, and I am saved. But I have to know more. Tell me more, I say. What's your name, he asks. Booker, I say. And he takes the sound of my name and draws it on the ground. I linger over that picture. I know I can hold it forever. What a great book about learning to read. Our second book today is by Mark Harshman, West Virginia Poet Laureate, and Cheryl Ryan. It is illustrated by Wade Zaharis, and it is titled, Red Are the Apples. The morning is cool in the fall of the year. We explore our garden to see what is here. Brown is the soil, loose and fine, that's helped the beans to leaf and vine. Yellow's the corn on stalks growing high, shading the pumpkins and reaching the sky. Orange are the pumpkins, lumpy and fat, buried amid leaves like a sleeping cat. Green are the leaves that spread left and right, crowding the beets, demanding more light. Crimson are the beets, growing deep down beneath the egg plates, eggplants in the dark, damp ground. Purple are the eggplants, shiny and smooth, nestled near Scarecrow, who's missing a tooth. Black is the hat on Scarecrow's head. It points to the sky and crows overhead. Blue is the sky stretched over all. When the wind blows, the apples will fall. Red are the apples felled by the wind. They'll be cider for sale, bottled and tinned. Gold is the cider that runs from the press. We fill our glass and glasses and taste autumn's best. Clear are the jars to use when to can, 
When we're all done, in bright rows they will stand. And when the harvest is over, in the fall of the year, we sit and give thanks for all that is here. Our last book of the day is titled Outside the Window by Anna Egham Smucker and illustrated by Stacy Schuett. On a strong leafy branch outside the bedroom window of a little boy there is a nest. In that nest lives a mother bird and her five baby birds. The biggest one loves to eat. The medium-sized one loves to play. The cleanest one loves to take baths. The chirpiest one loves to hear stories. And the tiniest one is always sleepy. But they are all very curious about the little boy who lives in the house that their nest in the maple trees can almost touch. In the evening, when the air cools and the sky turns pink, Mother Bird tucks her buried babies safely into their nest. The nest sways gently back and forth in the green love maple tree. And every evening, from the darkness of the nest, the baby birds ask their mother questions about what the little boy is doing. Is he asleep yet? asked the little bird who is always sleepy and who is almost asleep already. No, not yet, says Mother Bird. He is still playing outside. Playing? Still? asks the little bird who loves to play. What is he playing? He's making sand pies in his sandbox, says Mother Bird. Sand pies? Does the boy eat the sand pies? asks the little bird who is always hungry. No, little one, says Mother Bird. He doesn't eat the sand pies. He likes juicier things than that. Yum, says the hungry little bird, and he imagines the little boy eating a juicy bedtime snack. Do I hear water running, asks the little bird who loves to bathe. Yes, says Mother Bird. The boy is taking his bath. Ooh, says the little bird, shivering under his downy feathers, and he imagines the little boy splashing in cool water. Is he asleep yet, asks the sleepy little bird, very sleepy. No, not yet, says Mother Bird. He is brushing his teeth. What are teeth? asks the other baby birds. They are big white things inside his beak, says Mother Bird. Oh, the baby birds say, wishing they had teeth in their beaks. Is he asleep yet? asks the sleepy little bird with his eyes closed. No, not yet, says Mother Bird, but he is climbing into his bed now. Mmm, says the sleepy little bird. Imagining the boy snuggling down in his nest. Is it time for the story, asks the little bird who loves stories. Yes, it is time for the story, says Mother Bird. The boy's mother is opening the book. What is the story about, asks the little bird who loves stories. It's about a mother bird and her baby birds, says Mother Bird. Oh, says the little bird, and imagines a story all about herself. Is the boy asleep yet? asks the sleepy little bird, and a voice so soft his mother can hardly hear it. No, not yet, says Mother Bird. He is saying his prayers. How does he say his prayers? asks the other baby birds. He looks out the window at us and at the stars, says Mother Bird. Oh, the little birds say, feeling very important and lifting their head to try to see the stars too. Is the boy asleep yet? asks the little sleepy bird, too tired to raise his head. Almost, says Mother Bird. His mother is tucking him in and kissing him goodnight. Mmm, the little birds say, snuggling closer together in their dark, warm nest. Is the boy asleep yet? asks all the little birds yawning. Yes, the boy is asleep now, says Mother Bird. Ah, the little birds say, and close their sleepy eyes. Good night, sweet dreams, says Mother Bird, and she spreads her soft wings over the baby birds and over the round bowl of their nest that rocks in the strong arms of the maple tree outside the window of the sleeping boy. 
And those are our books for today. Outside the Window by Anna Egan Smucker. Red are the Apples by Mark Harshman and Cheryl Ryan. And More Than Anything Else by Marie Bradby. I hope you've enjoyed these today. And I hope that you'll be taking part in Let's Read West Virginia this Friday, April 13th. Have a great day.